you're entering an epoch in which humans are responsible for phenomenon that we used to attribute to God or nature. The world has moved too far to favor the individual at the expense of community. We live in a time, what I call the politics of amnesia, in which we are so focused on all kinds of material issues that we forget that we are also spiritual being and that the spiritual being is in need of spiritual food. There is no recipe for happiness, obviously. We're probably born with something called the happiness gene, which is a capacity to be more or less joyous, more or less relaxed. The only thing that can really change that is actually having a goal. If the goal you know, involves others, it's this extraordinarily gratifying thing to see the face of someone who's surprised because all of a sudden you're looking at them. Then all the things that require happiness, like food on my table, uh, warmth in my house, a roof that works, uh, I'm very simple in the needs that I want, but I, I want my family and friends. That's everything. Um, and ideally, a big pile of good books. That's what makes me really happy. Today we had a conversation about politics, about power, uh, how the world order is changing. And the conference was entitled The Ring or What Will Rule the World? Uh, is the drive for power, hunger, you know, depredation so strong that there is no turning back? We're faced with a world where existential threats to mankind demand collective solutions, yet nations of the world are divergent. No one part of the world is the same as the other, but clearly climate is something that will affect all of us. Uh, Large-scale migrations as well, that will be climate related, but also dislocation of states. I'm trying to argue against pessimism and fatalism. Through the making of beauty, through faith and you know, confidence in what humans are capable of doing at their best, there is always a point of return and there is a possibility for connection, a possibility for selflessness, a possibility for empathy. For me it starts in a classroom. It starts by working out what skills you need for young people. Uh, that means what language is, that means what, what understanding of technology uh, and being able to anticipate the kind of problems we face through bioethics, through climate, through AI, through robotics and really being prepared for, for difficult questions. In the end, the technological singularity that humanity is creating now is not emerging just from one isolated research lab. It's emerging from the coordinated activity of people all over the globe involved in all different walks of life and different countries and of different ages with different perspectives. To solve these problems uh, would need different countries to work together as part of globalization. How, how to protect our own humanity. And in this respect, I thought it was very interesting that the top military leader of the United States of America was telling us, look, military power is the one thing you should prefer not to use, right? Use your political instruments. Invest in community building, invest in education, invest in healthcare. If you know the facts, you know the risks, it's a good time to start acting. Let's make sure that we realize that peace is exception and war is the rule, given our nature. So let's invest not in, in, in peace things, but in awareness, in a, in a kind of cultural awareness, and then try to give people instruments in, in their hands which will make it possible for them to deal with their own fears. And what I hope will be the outcome is a, a renewed respect for community, a renewed respect for cultural integrity. Very simple, I just want peace. I want a boring life with no dislocations, no war, no famine, and to be considerate. I think it's important for the next generation uh, to work on this because you want to give your children a future. Um, it's just that simple. These amazing things that are happening, they're happening because of the efforts of, of, of each of us, right? And anyone can plunge in and make a substantial difference in the, either the creation of some new technology or the way that new technology is rolled out and, and deployed in, 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 the, in the world at large. Each tech company that started using advanced tech 
for a beneficial aim, and each work of art that's created depicting using tech being used in a, in a positive, positive way, I mean, each of these things contributes somewhat toward this aim. The one of my fears is that, Louis, we all understand the benefits of science and technology, but the danger is that we are forgetting um, what else we need uh, to live a meaningful life. Our lives being like a sea and a wave, you know, and, and you never know which ways the ripples are going to go, and the sea and the waves are, of course, you can't separate them from each other, and we're part of that, so we're all connected constantly, and I believe in those ripples, so I try to begin as many ripples as I can. Thank you.